If you like Apple products and you don't know who Mark Gurman is, you definitely should because he is hands down the most reliable Apple leaker or analyst. As you can see right here, 87% accurate with over 500 rumors, which is mind blowing, making him the most reliable Apple leak source. Now, Mac Rumors just came out with their new Mac Rumors podcast, and they had Mark Gurman as a guest, which is awesome and is totally legendary. And within that podcast, he revealed a ton of details about what we should expect from Apple in 2022. As you can see, there he is, Mark Gurman. And to be honest, I've got to admit that I was wrong on a couple of the topics and Mac related devices coming out this year because he went in depth and revealed some very mind blowing details that I was not expecting. So instead of you guys watching this full one hour and 11 minute podcast, I'm actually going to take this video and break down all the interesting details that he mentioned into a short and easy to consume video along with my own thoughts on those Apple products and what's actually gonna be coming. And I think this is important because the podcast so far doesn't have that many views, only 2.5K after four hours. So a lot of you guys are gonna miss that. So hopefully this video is gonna be interesting for you guys. So let's go ahead and get into those details. Now the first Apple device that Mark Gurman discussed was of course the redesigned M2 MacBook Air. And Mark Gurman says it's gonna be coming with an eight core CPU, just like the M1, but a little bit faster but it's gonna be coming with a 10 core GPU, so you're gonna get a bigger increase there. Now, as far as the ports, Mark Gurman said that the MacBook Air is not gonna have an SD card slot, it's not gonna have HDMI, but it is gonna come with the new MagSafe 3 from these new MacBook Pros, and it's also gonna come with a couple of USB-C slash Thunderbolt 4 ports. And as far as the display, he's not sure if it's gonna be coming with mini LED or not, so that's still in the air right now. And very interestingly, he also discussed the question of the notch. And right now, he's not sure if it's gonna get a notch or not, but based on everything he's been seeing, he said that he would be shocked if there is no notch on the new MacBook Air. Now, what makes this interesting is that in a previous video that I made, I showed off a MacBook Air without a notch because Leaks Apple Pro said that he leaked Apple CADs without any kind of notch but he recently came out with a new Apple manufacturing report for the M2 Air redesign, and he can now confirm that Apple has decided to stick with the notch design, so I think there's actually a pretty good chance that we do get a notch. And Mark also thinks that the notch is gonna be a good idea because it's gonna allow Apple to give it the same display size, but shrink down the chassis size to make it smaller and lighter. And Mark also mentioned that he wouldn't be surprised if it's just called the MacBook No More Air because it's gonna be pretty powerful with the M2 chip, and he also thinks that it's gonna take a lot of design cues from the consumer level 24 inch M1 iMac, which means we could get those off-white bezels and the keyboard. And the next product they discussed was the entry level MacBook Pro, which Mark Gurman previously talked about in his reports because they didn't think it would make sense in the lineup, but he thinks it totally makes sense because it would fill that price gap between the $1,300 M1 Pro right now and the $2,000 14 inch model. So Apple needs something kind of in between, maybe around 1,500, but but the crazy thing that he mentioned that I totally didn't expect was that it could be coming with the same design as the M1 MacBook Pro, except without the touch bar and with the M2 chip, of course. Now, I was not expecting that because I figured that Apple would give it the same 14 inch chassis with the new design and the notch. So I guess we're gonna have to see, but that is very interesting. Now moving further to the next product, we have the larger iMac. And it's interesting because this time within this podcast, he said that there's a good chance that it could actually be called the iMac Pro, which is very good news. But unfortunately, he still fully believes that it's only gonna come with the M1 Pro and the M1 Max chips and not the Duo, which is, totally not what I was expecting because I figured Apple would be doing that because of that little leak we found with the bottom of the M1 Max chip showing the die to die interconnect. So it looks like from his point of view, that's only gonna be coming on the Mac Pro, which would be very disappointing. And he also confirmed that there's likely that it's gonna be coming with 64 gigs of RAM as the limit, just like the MacBook Pro. So that's a little bit disappointing. And then going further, he discussed the high-end Mac Mini. And just like the iMac, he also thinks that the high-end could come with the same M1 Pro 
and M1 Max chips, and he even thinks there's a chance that they could call it the Mac Mini Pro just to make the whole lineup make more sense with the regular low-end Mac Mini and then the Pro model with the Pro and Max chips. So that would be awesome for marketing. And then if you're interested in the 24-inch iMac, he also believes that the new M2 version of that iMac is not gonna be coming until next year, which is 2023, which perfectly falls in line with my own expectations just based on how Apple delays the iMac compared to the other Macs. And now let's get right into the Mac Pro, which is what they discuss next. And Mark Gurman personally believes that the modularity of the Mac Pro is gonna take a massive hit, which means you're not gonna be able to replace as many parts as you can with the current Mac Pro. And as far as the design, this one is a total mind-blowing detail for me because he says it's gonna be half the size of the current Mac Pro, but he thinks it's gonna be around three or four Mac Minis stacked on top of each other with a very clean design on the front with the back having a ton of holes for cooling and a ton of ports. Now this is very interesting because way back in May of 2021, he changed his mind about the cube design and he said that it could look like a smaller version of the current Mac Pro, but now it looks like he's changing his mind again, potentially, and going with the cube design moving forward. So it's very interesting, and it's awesome that he's confirming that right now. And as far as the naming, this time in this podcast, he actually mentioned that it could be called the M1 Max Duo Chip or the M1 Max Quadro. So it's awesome that he finally referred to it as that, because that's what we have been talking about for the last couple of months, referring to the M1 Max Quadro in our personal videos. Now, Moving on, we have the M2 iPad Pro, and Mark mentioned that it's gonna be getting a bit of a redesign with the introduced MagSafe charging and the glass back. Now, in terms of how the MagSafe charging is gonna work, Mark mentioned two different possibilities. The first possibility is that it's gonna have the MagSafe 3 charger from the MacBook Pro right next to the USB-C port, or the second option is the puck style that we currently have on the back of the iPhone. So he thinks it could perfectly match just to help push MagSafe and MagSafe accessories forward. And between those two options, he thinks it's gonna be the puck style MagSafe wireless charging on the back just to push wireless charging forward and push MagSafe accessories and all of that so that you're gonna be able to charge your AirPods, your Apple Watch, your iPhone on the back of the iPad. And we just made a video on that topic, so if you have haven't seen that along with all the patents that we showed off, definitely check out that video. The first topic in terms of the Apple Watch they talked about was the rugged watch. Now Mark believes that the regular base watch right now is aluminum so it can still get dented. So he's saying that what you want is a more rugged casing to prevent those dents. And he says that it's going to look very cool and a ton of people are going to be buying it just for the look. So he says it could potentially look like a G-Shock or a Casio watch which is very interesting. Interesting. But then one of the guys at Mac Rumors asked him about the pricing on this new rugged edition, and he said that he believes it's gonna be a higher end, more expensive model, potentially with a third larger screen size, which has been in the leagues from Ross Young, so it might actually be a more expensive higher end. And if this happens, it could even potentially be the Series 8 Pro that I made a video about recently, so definitely check that out. And I'm not sure about that, but it could definitely happen at a higher, more expensive price point. So that's very interesting. And if you're interested in the health sensors of the Apple Watch, he says that Apple has recently been testing a body temperature sensor for basically checking your temps and letting you know if you're having a fever or if you're too cold or something like that. But he says that discussion on that has died down, so there is a chance that it might get delayed. And on top of that, there's also the blood pressure sensor that Apple is working on, but he believes that might come in 2023 or even 2024. And finally, we have the whole blood glucose sensor that everybody's been going crazy about, but he believes that's very far away, potentially 2025 or 2026. So we should probably just forget about that for now. Now moving forward, let's get into the iPhone SE 2 that we're expecting this spring. And he says that this is gonna be a 
big deal, especially for the up and coming markets like the Indian market because it's gonna be at a lower price, but he thinks it's just gonna get a newer chip and added 5G, but it's gonna stick to the same exact design that we have right now, so that's a little bit disappointing. And in terms of the future, Mark believes that we'll be getting a new iPhone SE with a larger display and probably Face ID because we can't stick to Touch ID forever, and Dylan DKT actually came out with some leaks about this earlier today, and Dylan believes that that new design is coming in 2024 with a major update, and he confirmed that this year's SE is gonna have 5G and a small spec update with the same design, so that's definitely a little bit more disappointing for us who were hoping for a better design. And now with that said, they moved on to the iPhone 14, and the first thing to mention is that there will not be a mini iPhone 14 model, which we were already expecting, and Mark confirmed that we are gonna be getting a hole punch on the iPhone 14 Pro models, which we were also expecting and hoping for. And on top of that, we could be seeing those new satellite features for emergency calling and texting like we were hearing about before. Now this next detail is very interesting and I was not expecting to hear this from Mark, but he believes that pretty soon, Apple is gonna drop the iPhone numbers and just stick to a simple naming scheme. So he believes we're gonna have the iPhone and then the iPhone Max, which is basically an iPhone with the same features, but just a larger display. And then we're gonna have the iPhone Pro with the upgraded features, and then the iPhone Pro Max with no numbers. And then of course we have the iPhone SE below that. And then in the future, he says we're gonna have the iPhone Fold. So let's get right into those details. In terms of when that should come out, he believes it's gonna be 2023 or 2024, but he says Apple is for sure working on this. And Dylan DKT actually came out and confirmed that Apple has been recently waiting and watching the foldable market to make sure that it's not gonna die off as a small niche or get irrelevant to make sure that they should actually make a foldable iPhone, but they are working on different prototypes as well, and they're waiting because the technology right now isn't there just yet to make it a really nice product because there are too many compromises that still exist with foldable displays, so Apple is basically playing the long game. Now moving on to Apple's AR and VR headset situation, he says that Apple has over 2,000 people working on their new mixed reality headsets and the AR glasses for a few years from now. And he says that this new product is gonna require a new operating system, maybe called ROS. And in terms of the release date for the next VR headset, Mark believes that WWDC in June makes the most sense because Apple needs major developer support to get all the new apps and everything ready for launch, kind of like the Apple Silicon announcement in WWC of 2020 before the launch of the first M1 Max because Apple needed developers to get all that software work ready. So I totally agree with Mark on this and I believe it's coming this June. And an interesting detail Mark mentioned was that this is gonna be Apple's biggest product in seven years. So Apple really wants people to try on the headsets and experience it for themselves in person, which means it would require an in-person event. So if Apple can pull that off in June, then it should be WWDC for sure. And in terms of what to expect from the upcoming VR headset, he says that it's gonna be very expensive and it's gonna focus on three different things with the first one being communication. So he Thinks Apple's gonna create a Memoji-like Zoom experience for meetings and that it's gonna be a very big deal. And then there's gonna be media consumption, so like watching movies, shows, and videos, like YouTube videos. And then finally, there's gonna be gaming. So he says Apple could potentially have their own AAA gaming studio in-house working on new games, which is gonna be awesome. And now with that out of the way, we have the new AirPods Pro 2, and they had a little bit of discussion about the stemless design, but I think he believes we could still have those short stems from the current AirPods Pro. And he actually mentioned one of the leaked designs of the AirPods Pro case that had speaker grills on the bottom for Find My and this little loop thing for accessories. And he says that that would actually be a great idea for 
Apple to do because Apple can then sell more accessories like an Apple loop in different colors to make extra revenue and I think that totally makes sense. And if that leak is true, then there's a good chance that the design of the AirPods Pro 2 could stay the same but with upgraded internals like better speaker drivers and better chips, better battery life, better software, and maybe even ultra wide band to replace Bluetooth to give us lossless audio, which I recently made a video on, and I think you would really enjoy it if you check it out. And now to my surprise, Mark actually believes that Apple could come out with updated AirPods Max, which I did not expect at all, and new color variations. Now, I personally just got AirPods Max, and I love them, but it sucks knowing that they might actually update them later this year, and I think that it could happen in December, since that's when the original AirPods Max came out and that might be a good idea for Apple as kind of like a Christmas sales boost or potentially Apple could end up delaying them by another year. And in terms of the upgrades Apple could make to the next gen AirPods Max, Mark believes that there's a chance they could ditch lightning and switch to USB-C only and give it better battery life, but he says there are definitely some upgrades that Apple can make. And in my personal opinion, I think that there's a very good chance that Apple is gonna add lossless audio support, both wired and wireless, with potential ultra wideband replacing Bluetooth, but that's that's just my opinion as well, so hopefully that happens. So there you guys go, I just wrapped up that full an hour and 11 minute podcast with all the juicy details into this much shorter video. So if you appreciate that and if you enjoyed this or learned something new, definitely click the circle button to subscribe for more videos like this one and definitely check out those videos I mentioned right over there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.